Hello. This is going to be a quick explanation of the computer science behind cryptocurrencies, including the Byzantine General's problem, Merkle trees, proof of work, and proof of stake. The Byzantine General's problem is an example problem demonstrating consensus. There are a group of generals positioned outside of a city that can communicate with each other with messages and must come to consensus on a course of action where they either all attack or all retreat, despite some percentage of the generals being traitors and attempting to undermine the other generals. Um, another important concept are Merkle trees. Merkle trees use a hash, which is a function that takes some piece of data and converts it to a representation such that it's difficult to unhash the data. So for example, if you were to take a picture, which is a piece of data, and hash it, you would get a string of um, information where no one else, if the hash is secure, no one else would be able to come up with an another piece of data um, that has the same hash. So this means if you have a hash of something and someone provides a candidate piece of data, you're able to cryptologically verify that that data was what created the hash. Um, so you can use this in a Merkle tree where you have blocks of data that you then hash and put the hash in new blocks of data um, and you can continue doing this. So if you have the hash at the top of the Merkle tree, you can then verify all the b blocks beneath it through the contained hash and so on down the Merkle tree. Uh, this means if you have the top hash, you're able to verify the validity of the entire Merkle tree. Um, so a blockchain is essentially a type of Merkle tree, but the data are uh, transaction information, and um, it's generally just a sequence of blocks, um, hence the blockchain. Um, so Bitcoin combines these two ideas of consensus and Merkle trees um, with public-private cryptography. Public-private cryptography is where you have um, a secret private key and a public key, and you're able to use your private key to sign messages um, and then anyone can verify that those messages were signed by the holder of the private key that corresponds to your public key. Um, so your public key is essentially your Bitcoin address, um, and then you signed transactions to send someone Bitcoins. The, those transactions then end up on a block in the blockchain, which is this distributed ledger. Um, and then everyone can see how many Bitcoins your address currently has. Um, so to solve this consensus problem, uh, Bitcoin used a proof of work system. Um, so essentially, people are only going to approve transactions that are valid to add on to the Merkle tree. Um, the issue you have is that you still need to pick someone to actually assemble the transactions um, and have everyone have consensus that the block they create um, is going to be the next one for the Bitcoin blockchain. So what Bitcoin does is it has difficult to solve cryptographic problems and the first person to solve it um, is essentially able to um, add the next block to the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, these problems are difficult to solve and require burning real-world resources, but um, are very easy to verify. So once you have the solution, it's easy for everyone to verify that you did, in fact, solve the problem. Um, so this works well. Bitcoin's blockchain is run for, I think, over 10 years now without any um, fraudulent transactions at the transaction layer. Um, the main issue you run into is that um, 
since you're burning real-world resources, a lot of electricity and electronics waste um, is wasted to um, just to validate these transactions. Um, another issue with proof of work is that if you are trying to run a smaller blockchain, um, miners from a larger blockchain can come over and immediately control um, the majority of the hash rate in your blockchain, um, which is not ideal. So proof of stake is trying to um, solve both of these problems. So it uses a similar, similar Merkle tree and um, transaction processing system uh, with public and private keys. Um, often systems now will even have more advanced functionality than transactions. Um, for example, Ethereum has, instead of just transactions, you can uh, put uh, virtual machine instructions on the blockchain to do general purpose computing for self-executing contracts and things like that. Um, so what it changes, though, is at this consensus layer, instead of selecting someone to propose a new block um, based on performing work, they're um, selected out of the current holders of the token, um, hence proof of stake. And um, the advantage here is there isn't the same need to um, to do this expensive mining. And the people who are um, choosing the next transaction are inherently um, incentivized to support the well-being of the blockchain, since they're the owners of it. Um, so uh, this, in general, w will work better for most um, blockchains, in my opinion, if you're willing to have blockchains potentially split and have uh, different token holders on separate blockchains. Um, the disadvantage versus proof of work is that um, with proof of work, it's very easy to see which is the largest um, blockchain. So, for example, for Bitcoin, you can see the hash power on different competing Bitcoin blockchains, and whichever one is the largest is likely to be the main Bitcoin blockchain. Whereas if there were several blockchains claiming to be Ethereum, um, you would have to rely on social validation um, to decide which one is the real Ethereum. Um, so you can see why where Bitcoin is primarily interested in being a store of value, it makes more sense for them to um, use proof of work, whereas blockchains like Ethereum that are mostly interested in powering um, applications and are okay, are okay with there being multiple competing um, chains are more open and uh, proof of stake makes more sense for them. All right, thanks.